If you currently work in a male-dominated industry, then today's episode is for you. My guest is Maisha Hagen, owner and head coach at Beauty and the Boss, which is a professional development and career coaching service for women who work in male-dominated industries. Through her work, she helps women develop leadership skills, strategically position themselves for a promotion, and also identify new career opportunities. I absolutely loved this interview, and I know that you will too. But before we get into it, I wanted to remind you, tomorrow, June 14th, is the last day for early bird ticket prices for our live event, Powerhouse Women 2019, and I don't want you to pay more than you need to. So grab yours. You can go to powerhousewomen.co slash event and grab your ticket June 14th. That's it. The prices go up after that, and I cannot wait to meet you all in September in Scottsdale, Arizona for our live event. It's basically like a big family reunion. So without further ado, let's get into today's interview with Maisha. Welcome back to Powerhouse Women, the podcast. I have the pleasure of interviewing a real life powerhouse today. And this is, I just love how life works. I, when I started this, this podcast, I wondered if it would be a struggle at all to find women who are willing to come on the show, but just who had a diverse enough group of stories where it wasn't always people hearing my voice. And I had the honor of meeting my guest today, sitting on a panel together. And our stories had so much in common that I knew, I think before we even got into the panel, I leaned over and I was like, do you want to be on my podcast? We um, both were like, hey girl, like, hey basically, woman. Basically, it think- was... Yeah, a girl crush at first sight. Yeah. So, Maisha, thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me, and I'm so excited about our conversation today. Same. So, I knew, first of all, that I had to have you on the podcast when I heard the really the background of where you've come from and then now what you're doing with your business. So, why don't you just start with really quickly, what your business is, and then we'll share a little bit of our commonality in the background we've come from. Sure. So my business is called Beauty and the Boss, and it is a career coaching and professional development service specifically for women in male-dominated industries. And um, I know we're going to get into that more later, but my background coming from commercial real estate and specifically construction, um, both being leader, both being a doer, um, really just leveraged into something that I saw was definitely a specific need for women who are capable and smart and um, ambitious, but are also missing a piece of what is this landscape that we're trying to navigate. And so um, I'm super excited to be able to do this work in the world and am really encouraged by the quality of, of women and men that, um, that we're, we've been working with. Yeah. And I love how you mentioned both, that there's, there's men and women at the table who are uh, want to see women advance in the workplace and specifically in male dominated industries. So absolutely. We'll circle back to that one for sure. But we, we connected immediately. And, and this is something I almost forget is part of my background, but I actually started in construction as well as a flooring rep. You were on the general contractor side and we both have that experience of working in an industry that on the surface is absolutely male dominated. And it was, an interesting time in my life because I was a young, I think I was 24 at the time. So you had my age combined with the fact that I was a female and brand new in an industry that I knew nothing about and was filled with people who had been there for 10, 20, 30 plus years. So immediately they just wrote me off as just a cute thing in a skirt. And what does she know? She can come around if she, you know, looks a certain way, but otherwise we have no interest in what she has to say. It was I mean, very interesting. I think I told you that, so you mentioning age, I think I told you if it wasn't you, it was someone else that I actually had to quit a job because they kept referring to me as kiddo. You like, hey, kiddo. Yeah. And I saw like, oh, this, this particular landscape isn't even about my, my gender, right? It is about my age. And so yeah. for me to continue to succeed, I have to elevate out of this environment. And um, it's, it's, it's hard to know, are you internalizing something? 
or are you reading something for what it is? And then what do you do with, with both of those truths or realities? And so, yes. yeah, it is, it is a true thing. Um, but again, the, I am, I am so encouraged when I see the women who start to get it, yes. who start to understand like, oh, I'm not crazy and I'm not insecure. Um, this is just simply what the game is. And now that I know the rules, I know how to play. Yep. Um, and then their success in that has just been mind blowing. And that's an, I love your point of view on that. And I, I was shocked. I don't know why I was, but I I don't think I was ready for the question. I did a radio interview right when the book came out, my book, Powerhouse Woman. And one of the questions I was not prepared to answer, but he asked live on the show was, you know, have you been discriminated against as a woman? Which is not actually what my book is about at all, but I understood where the question was coming from. And it was the first time where I sat back and I was like, well, I worked in the construction like, industry. Maybe, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, what's interesting to me is it never registered in my mind as, oh, they don't take me seriously. I need to fight against this. I was like, you, you have no idea what, how much you're underestimating what I bring to the table. So I knew that and I was grounded in it. I didn't ever feel the need to prove that to anyone else, which I think made it very easy just to be like, okay, well, this environment doesn't fit for me anymore. Right. It just doesn't. And I feel like that's similar to what you shared about your story. So I'd actually love if you would walk us through, because you just recently, more recently made the leap into entrepreneurship and really yeah. starting this business that I'm so excited to dive into fully what it's, what it's about and what you're going to offer. But talk to me about what inspired the leap from working in you know, male dominated industries yourself as an employee to now seeing the opportunity to start a business, helping other women make that transition and just really stand out, make their mark in their industry. Yeah. So uh, when, when we view this video, when it has a million views 10 years from now, we'll, we'll just date stamp it right now with uh, 2018. So really last year, um, it was just a huge year of transition for me. Just personally in my family. Um, and it was really, it was really strange cause I'm a vision board person. Like I love vision boards. Um, I had mine up in the bathroom, like same vision board for two years could check everything off the box. And I sat down at the end of 2017, like early 2018 to do a vision board and literally could not see anything, wow. could not envision anything, nothing connected to me. Um, literally all the pieces states, uh, spread it out on my dining room table for like three weeks. And I was just like, oh, I'm not feeling this. Right. So that was very telling because 2018 was so many changes just in my health, in my job. Um, like my favorite person in the whole world, who's my grandfather really started to decline in his health. He had had cancer for years and 2018, he started to decline and I knew he was going to pass away. And it was just so much. And it just made me start to rethink um, my own pace of life and, yeah. and why I was doing the things that I was doing. And, um, when my health declined, I was actually home from work. Like I actually was off work for three months. And during that time I really shifted and I, and I call it a downshift. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my, my, my mind just started to open up beyond being a problem solver in my job, right? It started yeah. to open up to what, what is, what am I doing with my whole life or what do I want to do and what can I do? And so, um, this work I had actually been doing quite a while through my job. Um, so the funny thing is I would have coaching clients and they would be like, so why am I writing a, a check to a construction company? Like they couldn't even figure out the connection. And the short answer was, I just had an amazing boss and I sat on the executive leadership team. My boss basically said, do what makes you happy and connecting with people and helping people makes me happy. So when the opportunity came, I put together a business plan and pitched it to my executive team, i.e. my husband. <laughs> and, um, you know, he had some questions, but we looked at it and he said, I, I believe in you. I know you can do this. I think it's the right thing for you right now. And so um, kind of worked behind the scenes to put things in place. Um, the last thing was my grandfather did pass away shortly before Christmas in 2018. Um, and I felt like that was the last thing I was waiting for. You know, I, I, I wanted to jump into and move with, a, with my whole heart. And so I was able to kind of, you know, mourn that. And we went through Christmas and New Year's and 
I think January 3rd is when I sent out the email and literally the title of the email was like, so I quit my job um, and sent it out to 300 people and got nothing but great support and, and uh, great encouragement. So that was just January in this, this year, 2019. Yes. 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 Wow. And how, I know. how are you feeling now? I mean, it's still relatively new. Oh, it's so new. Any more like you know what you're doing? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yes and no, right? Because I do think that you learn a lot from just doing. Yep. And um, there have been things that I've had to just figure out. And what has been the pleasant surprise is exposure to those things yeah. through, my, through my career has helped me to know actually what to do without me knowing that I knew what to do, if that makes any sense. You nailed it because, and I think that why I asked that question and we ask it of almost everyone, we, we pull out the good stuff because it's important for women to know who are sitting on the other side of that decision, that there's never going to be a time that you know it all. But once you step into it, I think once you decide and you really draw that line in the sand, you realize how supported you truly are. You realize how past experiences have prepared you to at least know how to figure it out. Absolutely. You don't know now exactly how to do exactly what you want to do. And I'll tell you my, my favorite days, my best days are when at the beginning of the day, I'm like, okay, here we go. Don't know how this is going to end. And then at the end of the day, I have figured it out, right? I have, I have solved the puzzle. And to me, that is equally as uh, motivating and equally as fulfilling as when I work with a client and see, you know, them have an aha moment. It's my Mm -hmm. own aha moment. Um, and I think for any person thinking of going into business for themselves, that has to be something that they connect to because otherwise you'll just get stuck in a cycle of always trying to find the right answer and you will never go and do. Um, yeah. I feel like we could just make a whole episode about <laughs> that, that one piece right there. Um, but yeah. when we were on the panel together, one of there was, every time you opened your mouth, I was just like sitting there enthralled with what you were saying. You, you brought so much wisdom truly. And one of the pieces that stayed with me especially was the question someone had asked about making financial sacrifices or what that looked like financially to, to truly be able to take the leap from working a full-time job to your own business. And you were really honest about some of the things that you as a family had to buckle down and do paying off debt and putting yourself in this position where you could start your business without having the stress of this needs to make X number of dollars or we're not going to eat tomorrow. And I, I loved that honesty. So will you share a little bit of what that transition was like and how you put yourself in a position to be able to make that leap? Yeah. So, um, I, I will I will preface this by saying when you feel something impressed upon your heart, lean into that because it may produce other opportunities for you in the future. So it was like three years ago, um, some friends at church bought uh, Dave Ramsey's book for me and bought the, the audio book for my husband who, who does not read. Um, <laughs> but he listened to it and it was great. And we took a road trip to New Mexico and on the way there and back, we just really decided we're going to, we're going to really just do this. And so at that time we had really, you know, great income two incomes. Um, and so we just buckled down. It was very painful because we were spoiled, you know, we were spoiled and used to kind of, Oh, there's food and I don't feel like it and let's eat or, Oh, let's, you know, let's go do this or, Oh, I bought this. Um, and so from January, I believe of, of 16, I'll say into probably March of 17, we eliminated about $85,000 worth of debt, um, of just credit cards, student loans, we had personal loans for, you know, things around the house that surprise AC went out. Right. And what do you do? Yeah. You just go to the bank and you get a loan and the bank makes it easy. Um, and because you're able to make those minimum payments every month, you think, Oh, this is fine. Um, and so that was like, I think that activity put us on the same page and we realized we can, we can work together in hard decisions. Yeah. And that came in handy when 18 hit, right? When 2018 hit, we, we already had a foundation that we could work together through hard things. Um, and so when I say that I pitched that business plan is because ultimately I'm proposing to cut our income in half. Right. Yeah. Um, 
but we looked at it and we knew we had the discipline. And so we stepped in and, and Lindsay, I'm going to tell you as a woman of faith every month, I was like, so Jesus is going to need to do a miracle because on paper, it literally just didn't make sense. It made no sense. Um, But we have not missed mortgage. We have not missed anything at all. We have not shortchanged, you know, child support. We have not, but there were changes. So um, I told everyone, people's eyes when I said this were like, girl, you out here telling too much truth. (laughs) Like I get produce at the 99 cent store. Um, And I mean, I'm not out here buying stuff that's like rotting, you know what I mean? But I will tell you that the same, the very same strawberries that were $4.99 at Fry's were 99 cents at the 99 cents. Mm-hmm. Same ones. Um, and so it's a humbling, right? Humbling of your pride with the greater vision in mind. And so um, another truth point, I am, I am currently applying for part-time jobs, right? Yeah. Um, because our savings account isn't growing. And to me, that is part of our security. And so I'm like, hey, I can go, you know, serve breakfast a couple days a week. And if that's $500 going to our savings account a month, that's six grand at the end of the year. So it's those kind of balances, you know, now um, I still have to commit to my work, right? And to my business. So now that means that I'm, I'm working more, um, but it's because for me, what I'm getting is what I want and that's worth it. Yeah. And I think it goes back to your point about there's, there's got to be a deep fulfillment, a deep love for the work that you're doing, because that's the part that no one really sees. No matter how authentic we show the real deal on social media or talk about it in, you know, on a podcast or in a, in a talk like we did, no one really ever sees the nights that we're staying up until right. 11 p.m. still answering emails. And so I just want to really want to give encouragement to women who are still in that, you know, especially those who are doing the side hustle and working yeah. their full-time job and wondering if it's ever going to ever going to free them. Sometimes that that leap looks a little bit more like a gradual transition. And I know that's how exactly how it was for me and and both of us are fortunate enough to be in dual income households to be yeah. able to make that choice. It's a whole different story for women who are a party of one right now in this right. season of life. Um, but I loved your honesty with that because I don't, I'm just so over the, I was an overnight success and then I left my job and I traveled the world. Like, honey, that's just not what my life looks like. And I, maybe that's, that is the box that you want to check. For yeah. me, I want my home paid off. You know, I want savings account. I want to retire well. And so as much as I'm focused on building this business right now, which is right in my face, I also have to balance what my long-term goals are um, and be humble enough. I think that's the real challenge of our heart is that when we talk about our businesses, that makes us feel like we're important in the world. There's a humility that comes when you have to say, hey, can I use you for a reference for (laughs) Chick-fil-A? And I'll hook you up with fries. Can I use you for a reference wink, wink. for Village Inn? You know what I mean? And yes, I give career advice. But I know that um, everything that I'm doing is working towards a yes. good. And I'm willing to do whatever that work is. I, I just love you. I love that honesty and that real perspective of how the journey can look for so many of us. I think that's more the rule than the exception Absolutely. in this transition. So Absolutely. you're, um, I want to talk a little bit more about your business. I want to talk about your, your business baby and, and really the difference that you're making there because uh, I mean, heck, I would have loved to have met a you back when I was entering this uncharted territory of a male dominated industry, the construction industry. Right. Tell me a little bit about like at first glance, when a woman first comes to you, what are some of the most common, I want to talk about like the mental blocks that you see and that you are able to coach women through when they're in a position where maybe they're, they're not getting the opportunities that they want or where they're feeling the really the struggle side of being in an industry that maybe doesn't have space for them at the moment in the way that it is right now. So what does the mental side of that look like, the mindset? So um, my coaching falls into into kind of three buckets. One is if if they've identified a specific skill that's lacking. So um, like I have one client who 
resume is wonderful and then goes to interviews and just, you know, trips over her words and just knows that this is not going well. So in that case, we're working on a skill, right? So that's yeah. very tactical. Um, in other cases, it's situations where women um, are in a firm and they like the firm and they like the culture and they want to maybe transition into something else or promotion or something. And typically the, the gap there is they're passive. They're waiting for mm -hmm. someone to come and say, you have done an amazing job and here is the, here's the job of your dream. <laughs> and that ain't happening. That's not how the world works. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times it is, um, it's unpacking that, right? Um, the other thing in that situation that can be challenging is they don't, they're, they don't, women are weird. Like I love us, but sometimes the way our minds work are weird. We feel bad about doing the things that guys do all the time, yeah. which is navigate the landscape. Right. Well, I don't want to ask for a favor. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want them to feel like I'm prying, pry, <laughs> get the information that you need to get. Right. And so it's finding that, that place for them that feels comfortable and authentic and connects to a larger thing, but also challenges them to use all the resources at their disposal to be successful. And I love that you use the word comfortable and authentic, authentic to them, because I think yeah. it can be easy to believe that we need to swing in the opposite direction, that we need to speak like a man or be almost go to the, the opposite end of the pen, pendulum. And that right. was always what confused me because that wasn't inherently who I was. I am a nurturer. I am a connector, which when I'm in an unhealthy place with it can be more like a people pleaser. Okay. And that was something that at the time I, I wasn't able to distinguish that that was actually my greatest strength, but it also could be if I wasn't mindful of it, I, I could, it could be something that people viewed as weakness. Yeah. So I love how you talked about, you know, teaching women how to be their authentic selves and yes. play the game. Like you said, just play the game of whatever industry that they're in. And, and I also sometimes challenge women in do they really want to play this game mm. um because um like one one client that i have who's pursuing a promotion and she she eventually did come to the answer pretty quickly too like of course i want to do this yeah but i press back a little bit because um it can feel uncomfortable right and it can feel sometimes we it can we can uh, internalize this as i'm selling out or i'm having to you know uh, become a good old boy or, or yeah. if there's things related to our, our race or our culture that we feel, you know, we can just internalize all of this and it's okay to, to again, turn and face it and look at it, but then you got to come away with it with an answer. And if at your core shifting into that is causing you more heart palpitations mm -hmm. than growing where you are, then this is not, you won't be successful here because you can only fake it for so long. You know, you can only fake it for so long. And so um, if that is the case, then what I, what I always want to reassure people is there's nothing less ambitious about you if you don't want that, mm. right? And I even had to learn that as a manager. I had people on yeah. my team that I wanted them to be more ambitious and they were like, I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I like where I'm at and they're not ambitious. And, they, and then I had to say, no, wait a minute, who are you to judge this person? They, they are just as ambitious and what they're doing or want to do is just as valuable as the person who wants to scale, you know, the career ladder. Um, yeah. And so even communicating that to people, because a lot of times we feel like we have to always be eyeing the next thing. And that's not always the case. That's brilliant. And what would you say is a good internal way to check and really just that litmus test to know, okay, wait, like I'm going to pause and I'm going to really work through this and get clarity around, do I want to put myself in a position to go after, let's just say it's at the next position. What process do you work women through or what questions do you give them to really do that work on the front end versus going after and killing yourself, getting this position yeah. to realize that it's not for you? I believe that peace leads us. Yeah. So um, I, I, I remember my car died. Like my car just died. Even the mechanic was like, listen, sister, ain't happening. Okay. 
And so my mom was like, just get your car fixed. Like you don't want it. You don't need to get a new payment. Da, 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 da. And she wanted an answer from me. She wanted me to say, yes, mom, I am going to get my car fixed. And I couldn't give her the answer because I hadn't decided. And so I worked in percentages. So I'm 50% sure that I'm going to get a new car, which means I'm also 50% sure that I'm going to get the other car fixed, right? And then I would just think about the two. And the one that literally made me sweat and give me heart palpitations, and then I was trying to figure out, well, where is the money going to come from? And what if my car breaks down again? That means there's no peace there. Uh, but when over here, I was thinking of this other idea of, I think it's time for a new car. My brain would just settle on that. I wouldn't start thinking, but where am I going to get the money and how am I going to afford it? I would just settle into, I think it's time to get a new car. And then I would lean into that a little bit. So then it would be, I'm 75% sure I'm getting a new car. 25% sure I'm going to get this, right? I would just kind of grow into it. And, and it's not an epiphany and it's not a... Um, pros and cons because logic does not always play in and so I do I believe that peace leads and I and I think that you can you can live in flux you know and just kind of test it out and the one that gives you the most peace I believe is the right thing yeah that that's actually a beautiful example and something that I talk about a lot is knowing the difference between because sometimes making a big leap that's going to stretch us doesn't feel peaceful in the moment, but there's a difference to that than when it's a stretching and it's scary and there's anxiety there. Right. How do you, how do you coach women to decipher between that when you're going to take a leap that's going to stretch you? So it, it's going to feel, it's going to challenge something within you. You're going to feel uncomfortable. How is that different from something that's just a no? So it's always case by case, but I think, yeah. I think, um, Oh, so I like doing video or in person because I can see a person's body language. I can physically see them be repulsive or fearful, right? I can literally see fear come over them. And I will sometimes ask, what's that? Mm. What is that? And they're like, well, well, well. Um, and typically it's tied in some fear and we have to turn and face that. So is it, is it a fear that if you're not successful, you're going to be homeless? Is it a fear that um, if you make this move and you are, and it usually is, it's a, usually a fear in failure of some sort, that then what am I going to do when I fail? And so a lot of times it's not even, it's not even real. Like when you shine a light, like it's like a kid, right? The boogeyman. Well, when you open the closet and shine the light in there, they go, oh yeah, there's nothing in there. And then they just, their mind is able to accept there's actually nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. Um, so as much as possible, we just, I just try to work with people to see what's really going on in your mind. And then we shake out, is that, is that real or true to you? And I, I try to push it past, well, I just feel this way because I can't challenge your feelings. You really do feel that way. Right. But what I can challenge is, is it a valid fear? Is it a valid fear? And if it's not, then you pay me good money to say, I don't care. We're going to go anyway. We're going to go. <laughs> We're going to just try it. Let's just try it and see what happens. Oh, I love that. And, and for me, in those times where I was going to make the biggest leap, having accountability and often, more often than not, accountability that I was paying for yeah. was the critical piece in me making the leap or just staying in my reasons and my fear. So I can just hear that you are that voice for so many women. You know, I make it really clear. This is not therapy. Like this yep. is, I'm not the person you're going to call and just vent to. Um, we're going to work together to figure out what to do. And, and I think I said this at the top and once you start doing it and you realize you're not going to die, like we really do feel like we're going to die. Once you realize you're not going to die, um, it starts to build momentum in you. Yeah. And it's amazing to see what people do, what women do when they get over that small cliff and see like, oh my gosh, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Oh gosh, I just got chills even when I <laughs> said that. It's true. It's amazing. It's so true. Yeah. Okay. So I know you coach a lot of women th who want to position themselves for leadership. What are some, because I, I think that no matter if someone's in the corporate world or they want to position themselves for influence, for leadership, just in their business. I, I think it's probably the same. Maybe you'll tell me differently, yeah. but what are some of the things that you 
see women can do to better position ourselves for leadership, for influence, however that looks in our business or our career? Show up. I think, I think how we show up is so important, you know? Um, so, so I am aware that especially, especially here, uh, in Arizona, right. The whole state is like 3% African American. Mm -hmm. Um, for those who are listening to the podcast, I'm black. Surprise. Surprise. My name's Maisha, right. (laughs) And so I'm, I am pretty confident that when I go to certain events around certain industries, I'm probably going to be the only African American there and and probably maybe even the only African American woman there. Um, and so for me, how I show up in that event is going to set the stage for every other woman, African American woman, woman of color that comes after me. And also impress into someone's mind that this person who is other of any kind is more than um, more than capable and, and able to be here and operate in this space. And so if that is um, if that is at the company swim party, then how you show up there, show up like a leader. Right. And, and you may not show up like Beyonce. You may have the body like Beyonce, but you can't show up to the company Christmas party like Beyonce. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, have to, you have to begin to portray, project and portray. Um, and so even in how we dress, you know, Arizona is very casual, but your dress says something. Now, I could have on flannel pants, but what you see up here is, you know, button. you could have on pajama bottoms, but I see bright pink. I see color, right? These are ways that we show up. Um, conference rooms, when we're having conversations, being present, asking engaging questions, challenging people appropriately to make sure that we're getting to the best idea and not just trying to be heard. Those things done well and done consistently will position you um, every time. That's such great advice. And it does. It translates to no matter what industry, what environment, male, female, you're in. Uh, that is number one. The yeah. biggest way is you decide who you want to be and you show up as her. Yes. You know, truly. Yes. Um, that, I mean, once again, we could probably just end there and people have already gotten so much value from. And sometimes that experience. elevates your own yeah. self. Like I, when I was, in, yes. when I was in school, I hated economics. I had an economics class for non-econ majors and it was the hardest class. And every single time I went to that class, I literally had to change in the heels and go in the bathroom and like put on fresh lip gloss, like just to be able to go into that space and not feel defeated. Um, And I got a D and I passed and I was gloriously happy. And I know it was like, oh, it's the heels and lip gloss that saved me. But (laughs) I'm a huge believer in that. And actually, this is something there will be future podcast episodes on before my book came out. I actually hired someone to style me as the woman that I wanted to be in this next phase, because I think so much of how I was operating, even my habits, the way I dressed, the way I styled my hair were just habit. And I was to this point where I knew I grew so much on the inside that the outside didn't match. But I, so I'm a huge believer of that. When I, if you ever see me wearing red lipstick, it's probably because I just needed a little boost, a confidence boost that day. <laughs> really? I understand. It's so true. Yeah, yes. it is. I feel like a pair of heels does that for me. Yes. People yeah. would always ask why I wore heels running around Phoenix in the middle of summer carrying my carpet samples, but it was because it yeah. was something that made me feel like I presented myself as someone to be listened to. It changed yes. my posture. It changed how I felt about myself. It was a great calf workout. I mean, (laughs) don't mind the sweat dripping down my leg because it's 115 degrees, but look at this muscle. Look look how how great my calves look. Yes. I love it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So as we start to wrap this up, I want to hear more about what you are truly providing for women through your business. And I want to talk about your new program that's going to be launching by the time this podcast episode airs, it will be live, right? It will be in, uh, registration will be opening. Okay, great. Yeah, so sure. tell us a little bit about the boss squad yes. and everything that you are doing to change the way women show up at work. So, um, one of the things that I was aware of as I was starting my business is, um, access to information, 
right? Like we have an abundant amount of information, but the quality of it, like through the internet, but the quality of it and the application of it is usually reserved for um, people who can afford it. Um, so a, a perfect example is yesterday, I led one program of a six week program, professional development within a company. It's their own development program. And everyone in that program, there were 10 women. I think the average tenure at the company had been a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, I did not get access to this level of professional development until I was already at the executive table. It blew my mind that they were getting it so early. Mm -hmm. um, but it resonated with me because I do not feel that access to the information that will help a person elevate themselves in their lives should be um, an exclusive thing, right? Only to people who can afford it. And so um, I make my pricing very affordable. I don't want someone to have to stay for three months, work with me once, and then can never work with me again. I want us to build a relationship and to really be that, that resource for them, um, whether that is you know, perspective or research or challenging or accountability. Um, so my, my newest product that I'm launching that I'm so excited about is the Boss Squad. Um, and it is a six-month subscription program that I feel like is not like anything else in the you know, online mastermind space. Because in addition to the information that's going to be coming out each month, very targeted around a specific topic, um, there's also a, an accountability function built in. So it's not a thing where, hey, just sign up and pay and I'm going to send you this information and then, um, you know, have at it, hope that works out really well, but building in accountability so that hopefully by the end of that six months, um, a person is able to see their growth, but most mm -hmm. importantly, they step into 2020 ready, right? Because we yeah. start thinking about goals for the new year, like December and then January, and maybe that's, maybe you're not even ready, right? You can start to yeah. think, sheesh, I got to get ready for the goal. This is getting ready. Um, I think sometimes we just, we forget that six months is a lot of time, right? We lose our momentum out of the new year. And so pulling all that back up in the middle of the year and pushing through, um, and I'm super excited about the, the topics and the guests and the books and the videos. I mean, I call each month a dossier of goods because I just, I feel like the quality of what each woman is going to get is going to be so much more useful and beneficial than just scouring the internet or trying to have coffee with nine people in a month. And that's, oh, isn't that the truth? All of, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's no shortage of information out there, but I am the type of woman where I'm like, put the most important ones in front of me so I know what to focus on. Yeah. And I think that's important for us as women in careers and with family lives is we've got to be able to access the information, get the support and do it in a way that, you know, we can always make the time, but that fits our full plate of a life. Yeah, I, I feel very much like that's exactly what you're providing for women. So where, where do they go to learn more about it? Where do they find you? Tell me Absolutely. all the things. So I am on LinkedIn. My name is spelled M-A-I-S-H-A -A, um, because Maisha is not an easy name to spell. Um, and last name is Hagen. So they can connect with me on LinkedIn. But to always get information about kind of what I'm providing or how to work together, you can check out my website, which is bosslady.com coach. Um, and on that page will be a, depending on the date of this, will be a sign up where they can get in and I'll start to send information, get an application going. Um, because the boss squad is only open to 50 people. Um, okay. because I can't, I want quality, right? I want to deliver quality. And so this is, for me is not about let's get a thousand people in this thing and make, you know, $3,500. No, it's about, we want to get a good cultivated group of women and at the end of the year have that same group almost graduate, you know, yeah. almost graduate. So, um, yeah, they can go to my website, bosslady.coach. Um, and if they have specific questions that they want to ask me, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, or reach me through the website. And we'll make sure to link all of that in the show notes as well. So it's very easy to access, yeah. but I, so typically I end the episodes with just a reminder, something that's on my heart that I want women to know so that they know, number one, they're not alone 
and that each of us are on our own version of this same journey. But something just told me to have you really end this with what you want women to know. So just as you were saying that, I got this picture in my mind of um, a lot of roads and they're all kind of doing their own thing. And there's a woman on each road. And when you look to the left and you look to the right, there's some people there and they're a little further ahead of you and there are other that are a little bit behind you. And the thing is this, not who are you beating, not who's beating you, not can you get on their road. It's about staying focused on yours and just making sure that when you look to the left and to the right, there are just good people still moving forward. Um, there's so much comparison and so much competition in our society that um, sometimes it, it's actually more debilitating to us. And the thing I would just want to encourage women to know is that you, um, you have a path for you. You have a purpose for you. God has a purpose for your life. And if you stay on it, you will be far happier than trying to do someone else's life at their pace. Um, and then when you get to the end, you won't be exhausted and you won't be miserable and you won't be bitter. You will be content and joyful and full of peace. Maisha, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Lindsay.